Hello everyone, I'm Krasi and this is my week, day by day, description of the celestial events, how are they going to influence us and then after I make my description we'll be seeing day by day what to expect from which day of the seven days of the weeks. Just to make a small announcement, if you could, um, if you're not seeing my notifications, please, because I received such, such messages from people, please unsubscribe then subscribe again and then click on um, the follow the, the bell um, so unsubscribe subscribe again and then click on the bell button and this is if you want to uh, receive notifications from me because YouTube made something which is not allowing this function to work anymore um, so let's see what to expect from the week to come it's a very special week very important. We're having planets which become retrograde this week. Even now, today, Saturn and Jupiter uh, became already stationary. And in um, actually, Saturn will become uh, retrograde just in one day. And Jupiter will become retrograde in, in five, six days because now he's stationary. Venus is becoming retrograde tomorrow. Tomorrow she will be 11th of uh, May. Venus will be uh, stationary for two days and after that she becomes retrograde. So it's a special combination, a bit even complex to analyze. And let's see what this would bring us. We, we will be having three retrograde planets. This is very important. It's not uh, you, a unique situation. We have this quite often, but now because of the other important conjunctions of the year, we give more attention to this. Otherwise, there is nothing to worry. We have this happening every year. So what to expect in general from the retrograde planets. Now, first to tell you that this is not devastating, especially uh, saying this because most of the people are very afraid from Saturn. And this is logical because he's the Lord of Karma. He's the Lord of Tears. He's everything that is associated with sorrow and, and pain. But I've seen many, many horoscopes of people who are uh, fine financially, who have normal life with retrograde Saturn. So this is not a big deal. I've seen people with beautiful lives with retrograde Jupiter. So it's really not to worry so much. But yes, indeed, we, we're already so um, overwhelmed with difficult situations that we, of course, give attention to this one as well. So what is typically happening when the planets are becoming retrograde? First, they're stationary, so from our perspective, we don't see them. And then they become retrograde from our perspective, they are moving backwards. But they're not really moving backwards. And this is only from our perspective. This is important to think about. Another thing is that they are slowing down. They're slowing down what they mean. And because they are symbolically retrograde, they watch towards the previous sign, the sign that they were uh, in before. So Saturn, I'm talking Sidiru astrology, uh, which is the astronomical coordinates. It's like the Vedic astrology or like the Babylonian astrology. So Saturn was until January 31 in Sagittarius. This was a time of awakening without so much pain. Now we, after he entered Capricorn, he had the phase of invisibility, he became visible, he met uh, before that Pluto, before entering Capricorn in December, then he met Mars, and this is, these um, conjunctions were behind the difficult situations that followed up after, the, after that. But what, is, what happened while Saturn was in Sagittarius, he was definitely not easy. Most of the people who had Sagittarius ascendant, Sagittarius midheaven, Sagittarius moon, Sagittarius sun, um, would say that they had two and a half years of difficulties while Saturn was there and affecting these positions. So what is happening is that Saturn may remind us of this period, what was uh, before January 2020 when Saturn was in Sagittarius, what were the times? The times were not that painful. Maybe for some on personal level they will. Many people who had Saturn on meet heaven would say that they lost their jobs or that they had complete um, complicated restructuring of their careers. Others will say that after that, 
um, after they lost their jobs, they received gifts from Saturn and they felt really very well on another level of their consciousness. So they felt well. So it's not, it is a complex situation, reminding us to revisit this period, what we didn't finish, what we didn't complete, what we still have to do, in what way we need to redo our karmic um, missions and so and this will be related to this period when saturn was in sagittarius so think about this think what happened before saturn entered sidereo capricorn in january 2020 and here's with jupiter which is softening saturn and jupiter together in ancient babylon there is one text when they even call them uh, the, the celestial brothers or something with this um, meaning so together they're not bad but i will remind you that in um, diurnal uh, horoscopes people who are born in the day these are diurnal planets they denote they uh, have um, better influence and they are saturn is less harmful and jupiter is, is more generous so this is important so you have to think whether you're born in the day or you're born in the night in order to see how this uh, how this retrograde motion of the planets influence you however this is not devastating uh, it is it will make us revisit it is putting life back to normal like we imagined life before these terrible events um, in january 2020 so this will remind us of the normal life for quite uh, for some period and uh, it, this is important because life will come back to to normal so this is what is going to happen another thing is that in this very moment mars is i think so just a couple of days ago he entered aquarius and also this week is uh, we're starting with mars in the four degrees of aquarius he will even reach this week the point of formal health which is a powerful royal star of spirituality spiritual awakening what is the, the sign of aquarius it is the sign which is uh, ruled by saturn and um of course uranus what is uranus he's the cosmos <clears throat> he's awakening he's uh spirituality he's um his freedom he's got anu who is one of the creators of humanity so it's a very important sign mars is there it's quite revolutionary and you're already seeing people who are awakening due to that but awakening in more revolutionary way like truth is coming even more and more on the surface and people are reacting and you see this already happening and it's going to be fact for the whole month of um of may even until mid june until mars is in aquarius after that when he enters um Pisces, these things will, will change a bit but while he but now this is the fact and this is going to escalate this week because of the retrograde motion because people will be reminded of the normal life and because of mars who is very revolutionary so this is this is something very important and yeah venus is turning retrograde as well this week um i think just 11th yeah on the 11th of um of may she's becoming retrograde and when she's becoming retrograde interestingly this is happening exactly she's stationary and turning retrograde in the star capella which is a sacred degree related to money which she she will be influencing certainly the markets but it is not without the reason that she's turning retrograde in capella and with this venus this is very important motion of venus um it is powerful like venus and capella together powerful powerful star of money and this can make some corrections to the markets like the situation that you see now can be temporarily reversed so we're having two three stationary planets and mercury who in three days this week in the middle of the week was become invisible in the sign of taurus uh, right now he's in pleiades very esoteric very occultistic people with this situation are more and more interested in uh, uh, hidden esoteric sciences so this is this is one thing and yes two planets become three planets becoming retrograde mercury becoming visible important very active week 
of another wave of awakening, more revolutionary than it was, uh, more and more coming back to normal up until certain points, and until we see again in the winter, um, Jupiter Saturn conjunction and um, Mars who will be in the autumn in his retrograde motion and, and uh, the fast cosmic setting. So it's again quite powerful. But what is positive here is that we're awakening more and more people. It's like a wave. It's like um, it's like tornado awakening in, with such fast pace. So I'm very positive that nothing will be the same again and it will be for good. So this was my, uh, just my uh, introduction. And just to tell you that, of course, people who have Ascendant Sagittarius, Sagittarius or Tropical Capricorn will feel this very much. People who have Ascendant Taurus, Scorpio, of course, will feel this very much because Venus is there. And in three days, also the sun is entering Taurus, uh, uh, Taurus yeah. And we'll be passing through our goal, the star of the Medusa, the star of protection. After that, we'll pass the, uh, pass the Pleiades, the seven sisters on the sky, who are so uh, unpredictable because they are, um, yeah, the seven sisters, seven women. And also, um, Venus, even while she's retrograde, is helping because she's powerful evening star in Taurus. She will be visible up until end of the month and then from 30th approximately to 9th of um, June she'll be invisible but up, up until then even retrograde she's helping and blessing and she's aspecting uh, Jupiter and Saturn who retrograde so all this is powerful. So let's see now what is happening day by day. Monday the, uh, 11th of May, 16th lunar day of the waning moon. Now, Monday is Monday ruled by the moon. When it's ruled by the moon, the moon is the, the queen. The moon is determining what is happening. It is, it is to say that um, the day will be pretty lunar, pretty much about intuition, and the moon is in... The Sagittarius at that time, together with Ketu, very esoteric, very occultistic combination. And also, this is powerful because there is the Milky Way. And the Milky Way is another very spiritual placement. And the day is ruled by the moon. So let's wear white pearls to, or, or, or Larimar as a gemstone or, um, or just a simple transparent mounting crystal all this beautiful to enhance your intuition and to give just a good feeling to support your health oh this is this is really very nice but this is the day when all planets are becoming retrograde so the day is not so appropriate for new beginnings some med medical interventions definitely can be done um if not so invasive because the ruler of the moon jupiter is retrograde so he may ask put you to revisit the medical um process therefore it's good to to do medical interventions which are not invasive beauty procedures yes if not invasive so this is another important thing what else uh travel uh, yeah i know we are restricted but still uh, yes. What else to tell you about Monday? Yes, I mentioned about the Milky Way. And um, yes, the moon is having harmonious aspect from the sun. It's a quite harmonious day. But for new beginnings, it may not be very appropriate. The moon is waning. For agriculture, good. To, to uh, plant rooty vegetables. This could be uh, nice. Uh, yes, for agriculture. So to, yes. And now we're looking at 12th of May. 17 lunar day, Tuesday, day ruled by Mars, and the moon is conjoined Pluto in Sagittarius, so it's good to be a bit careful during this day. The day is also Martian. Medical interventions, rather not. Um, if not invasive, you may, because when Mars is ruling the day, uh, some medical interventions are allowed. Uh, on the other hand, if you like to uh, support your self-assertiveness, your uh, this health ambition, if you feel you're lacking it, 
you may support Mars during this day, like wearing red or just putting red shawl or eating this food which are related to Mars, all spicy foods, red foods as well, this is related. Uh, agriculture, yes. Planting underground, rooting vegetables is very, very appropriate. To gather herbs, still very, very appropriate. To travel carefully, new beginnings, I wouldn't advise on this particular day. And now let's see what is happening on 13th of May, Wednesday. And here the moon is exactly conjoined Saturn. And this is happening in a very special place. Now, there you have the star out there, the eagle on the sky, star about clairvoyants, mediums, uh, people who have this uh, in their natal position would experience this very powerfully. Others may see how this works on them, may see in what way these can support their intuition, spiritual development. This is when uh, the moon and Saturn together are in Altair. Powerful, powerful, powerful combination. Uh, also because it's Wednesday, the day is ruled by Mercury. Mercury is about to become visible in two days, but he's already active in a helical phase. He just left the Pleiades. He's entering the constellation of uh, Perseus, where he is very, very uh, powerful in terms of he's a bit Martian. He's a warrior. He can have this radical revolutionary thinking. This is what this Mercury can give us. And yes, uh, it's the last day of stationary phase of Venus, who next day is becoming direct. So this is what is happening on the sky. When you want to support your Mercury, well, Mercury is turning visible any moment. And what we can do is, yes, use the day, of course, for mental work, studying, writing, uh, this is wonderful for scientists, for astrolog astrologers, people who are ruled by Mercury. And also during such a day, we can share our knowledge with others, uh, do some creative work, especially when Mercury is in Taurus. It's beautiful to have of creativity, applying your creativity. Um, what else? Media work, yes. Saturn and... Um, the moon and Jupiter are aspecting this, but with a trine, so it could be good. New initiatives, not yet, uh, because of this uh, place of the moon. Medical interventions, I would say very carefully. I would rather not. Beauty procedures, wait until, wait for one day. It's just the day is not very appropriate. But it's a day of Mercury, so keep this in mind and expect the helical rise of Mercury who will appear in approximately two days, uh, approximately because it depends on the people's uh, territory or longitudes, but he will appear in the evening star, a sky as an evening star. And let's see what is going on on Thursday, 14th of May, 19th lunar day of the waning moon and the moon is conjoined again amazing interesting star called, called Aubali very spiritual star very very wide spiritual amazing star so yes another day for enhancing people's our intuition or or um clairvoyant or mediumship qualities for those who have those who have them and it is a day ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is retrograde, just actually still stationary, but turning retrograde. And, um, well, Jupiter is making us revisit our philosophical values, belief systems, work on them. Um, he's a bit, a bit suppressed in Capricorn where he's detriment. And also... He is, uh, of course, a bit suppressed by the presence of Saturn, who is the Lord in Capricorn. So this is one thing which is uh, happening, but still, Jupiter is Jupiter always benevolent, benevolent. So, well, it's there ruled by Jupiter, and it's good to have this in mind. Um, and we can wear the gemstones. I often repeat them. It will be this will be the yellow sapphire. This would be. Uh, citrine and many, many powerful yellow untreated natural stones belong to Jupiter. During this day, agriculture work, yes, planting, uh, yes, trees, flowers, also planting um, rooty uh, vegetables and plants, and medical interventions, carefully if they are not invasive, yes, new beginnings, not.
And now we're looking at Friday, 15th of May, 20th lunar day. The moon is just in the very first degrees of Aquarius and the day is ruled by Venus. And the moon is applying to make conjunction with Mars. Day, is, day to be to watch out, not very harmonious. Some medical interventions can be done. Planting, careful that you don't hurt yourself. Uh, again, not leafy, but um, vegetables under the ground. Um, medical interventions carefully, new beginnings on this day not. It's a day of Venus. Venus is still visible on the sky, beautiful as an evening star. It's wonderful to connect with Venus. It's even recommended. This is a wonderful, wonderful experience. And she always um, like pays back these uh, efforts to, to really uh, try to connect and see Venus as an evening star every evening. So she's still visible and, and you can do that. And yes, when Venus is ruling the day, we can wear pink, white, flowers, what, what beautiful things, beautiful sweet apples, cherries now come. Um, so uh, gemstones, pink quartz, tourmaline, pink diamond, even um, many, many beautiful gemstones belong to Venus. And then we're looking at 16th of May, Saturday, 21st lunar day. Yes, the moon indeed is in the vicinity of FOMO health, very spiritual, of course, the fourth royal star, which is related to spirituality, as this is the star of the spiritual guru. And the moon is there, but still with Mars. She is making harmonious applying aspect to Venus, which is good already, which is good uh, aspect, fine for uh, agriculture work, fine for planting uh, trees and flowers, and still rooty vegetables, but still we need to be careful because the 21st lunar day is always considered critical. And because this is Saturday, it's day of Saturn, still always we may need to be a bit careful. Medical interventions you may do on this day, but again, the, the moon well, the, the moon is applying to Venus, so it's all right. Uh, to travel, we may. But the day is ruled by Saturn. We can wear the gemstones of Saturn. Onyx for people that like. Dark sapphires. Mm. Well, it's a day ruled by Saturn. And just to rethink our um, value system, because Saturn is ruling that. And... New beginnings, not. The moon is waning, already approaching um, approaching conjunction with the sun, so it's not really appropriate. And then we're having uh, Sunday, which is 17th of May, 22nd lunar day. The moon is harmoniously making aspect with Venus, with Neptune. Well, this day is fine for a medical interventions and new beginnings not it is day of the sun i highly recommend welcoming the sun in the morning we can wear the gemstone of the sun ruby garnets many stones carnelian many beautiful orange red stones belong to the sun even the peridot belongs to the sun even if green but there is a lot of information on my website. You can see them on gemstones, on talismans, which I make planetary. All this is available uh, on my website. So yes, it's the day of the sun. It's wonderful to welcome the sun, to experience this first uh, rays of the sun. It's very, very healthy and very, very nice. And um, well, to travel, we can. Medical interventions, we can. And yes, this is the day of the, the end of the week and new beginnings. It's not appropriate. We need to wait for the, for the other uh, lunar month to start. Then the moon will be very potent and it will be different then. So this was my um, information for you for this week to come from 11 to 17th of May. Have very harmonious week. Um, well, awaken to this information, to the truth, because this is what we're meant to do right now, and be happy.